MCCLA. Welcome to the live broadcast of Metropolitan Community Church, Los Angeles. Please join with me in the words of the call to worship, a leader and people response. Let us worship God. In the name of Christ. Let the peoples praise you, O God. We will do that in just a moment. Let all peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, has blessed us. Therefore, may God continue to bless us. Let all the ends of the earth revere him. Let's rise then in body and spirit for our openings hymn, Praise to the Living God. Transfiguration Sunday remind us that each and every one of us is a transfigured and transformed human being into the very likeness of Christ himself. And so we welcome that spirit, that Christ amongst us, as we ask, O oh God, that you bless us in our worship to the honor and glory of the one that we worship this day. And in Jesus' name, 
Amen. God bless you this morning. Please be seated. It is, as always, a joy to welcome you to worship on this beautiful Sunday morning, a little crisp underfoot, but beautiful nevertheless, to join us in spirit and to join us in love one with the other. Welcome to you. I want to welcome you, especially if you're worshiping with us for the very first time this morning. Uh, we know that you have a choice in worshiping communities, but we are delighted and ecstatic that you are with us this morning. Uh, I wonder if you would indulge my spirit, if indeed you're with us for the very first time this morning. I wonder if you would just raise your hand and keep it up for a moment so that we can see you, uh, so that we can welcome you to worship this morning. It really is a joy to welcome you. Our ushers uh, will get to you eventually, uh, and we do welcome you. Please accept this brochure as our way of acknowledging your presence amongst us. Inside, you'll find more information about our congregation. You'll also find a welcome card that's designed specifically for you this morning. Uh, if you would care to, please do fill that form out. Uh, later on in our service, we receive an offering, and we invite you to place those cards into the, welcome, uh, into the offering plates. Uh, they do ask for some personal information, uh, but want to assure you that that information comes directly to me. My name is Reverend Dr. Neil Thomas. I'm the senior pastor of our congregation. Uh, but along with every single person that surrounds you in this space this morning, uh, we truly try to be the hands and the feet and the heart and the life of Christ in the world. So welcome to you. You'll see that the ushers are passing out the welcome tablet, so please do take a moment to sign in for us this morning. Uh, let us know that you've been present. Uh, also let us know if there is a way in which we may be able to minister more effectively one with the other. Perhaps you would like a member of the church staff to give you a call this week. So if you would, please do check that box and we'll try to follow up with you as swiftly as possible. Of course, if you're in need of emergency pastoral care today, no one needs to leave this place without knowing that they are loved and cared for. Uh, so please do let us know. Um, please see any one of us that served on the dais this morning, and we'll be glad to spend a few moments with you directly after worship. Please do take this moment to uh, silence all of your devices and to make sure that they are on silent during worship. Uh, we uh, don't want to embarrass anyone, but if it goes off during a sermon, I can't promise that that won't happen. So please uh, do take a moment just to silence your um, phones and pages and all of those other wonderful mechanical things that tend to go off during worship. As you came in this morning, the ushers would have given you your orders of worship, and inside you'll find the announcements for today and for the upcoming weeks. Uh, on the front, you'll also find the order of today's service, and so we want to uh, let you know how your day today can be more meaningful, but we also want to let you know uh, of all of the activities that are happening in our church and in our community. So please do take these home and mark on your own calendars uh, the events and uh, ministries that you would like to become a part of. Not everything that we do as a church is announced from the pulpit on a Sunday morning, uh, so it really is important that you take these things home. Uh, but this morning I do have some announcements for you, so if you would just bear with me, I'll run through those as swiftly as possible. We are taking applications for our new Kids Club coordinator. Um, if you have an interest in working with our kids in our church, specifically during the 11 o'clock service, uh, please do see Reverend Dr. Pat. She has application forms this morning. Um, and we are taking applications today, so please do let us know. Azania, our ministry to people of African descent, will be meeting today in the upper room above the uh, fellowship hall. Uh, that will be today at 12.30. I don't think it's actually in the upper room above the fellowship hall. It's in the Ryland room. I'm not sure where the upper room is in this building, uh, but uh, uh, it would be Reverend Dr. Pat's office. But uh, no, it's actually in the Ryland room directly after the 11 o'clock service today. Our young professionals uh, will be meeting today, uh, Feb uh, February the 10th at 5.30. Uh, that will be at Home Restaurant, and that's before the Jason and DeMarco concert. That's this evening at 7 o'clock. So please, if you would like to join with the young professionals, uh, all are invited uh, at Home Restaurant today uh, at 5 o'clock, 5.30, I should say, for a dinner before the concert. If you'd like more information about our young professionals group, please see Reverend Melissa Smithy. Uh, and she'll be glad to give you more information about that. And this evening, yes, we do have our concert with Jason and DeMarco, uh, celebrating families of diversity. Um, and uh, that uh, concert will be opened this evening by Billy Joe Valentine, and uh, he is with us this morning. Um, and so we'll be hearing from him just a little bit on, later on in our service this morning. Our Bible study in Tagalog uh, continues on the second and fourth Tuesdays, at snacks at 6.30 and study at 7.15. Uh, that would be in the Hunter Room, which is accessed behind the sanctuary. That would be this coming Tuesday, um, our ministry, Sharing God's Word Together. 
Uh, that will be in Tagalog and in English, so please do come and celebrate with our uh, Filipino community. Can you believe uh, Tuesday is Mardi Gras and Wednesday is Ash Wednesday? Um, so uh, we're inviting you to Ash Wednesday services, February the 13th. Uh, we'll be celebrating at noon. Uh, that would just be a simple imposition of ashes, um, and there'll be a member of the staff available between the hours of 12 noon and 1 o'clock for the imposition of ashes. And then at 7.30 in the evening, we will have our Ash Wednesday service, um, and that, of course, will include the imposition of ashes, uh, but it will be in English, uh, in Spanish, and in Tagalog. So uh, please know that will be in uh, uh, our trilingual, trilingual service um, for Ash Wednesday at 7.30. Our men's spirituality group are stepping out for lunch on February the 17th. Uh, please see Michael Sullivan for more information. He's not with us at the 9 o'clock, but he'll be with us at 11 o'clock. And we are delighted to let you know that uh, Paul's Spirit is returning to our congregation. Um, if you are uh, HIV positive and man, uh, you are invited to join us on Saturday, February the 23rd from noon until 2. Uh, lunch will be provided, and you can see Sammy, Tori, or Michael. Tori is down on the front row this morning, um, and he'll be glad to give you more information about that. We're also inviting Congregation Kolami, which is the synagogue uh, not far from our location here, um, and they are also uh, going to be uh, invited to join us uh, for our POS Spirit, uh, which is a support group for HIV-positive folks, uh, specifically looking at their spiritual journey and how the uh, HIV has affected their own lives. So please uh, do see Tori this morning, and he'll have more information uh, about that. And finally, this morning, before we uh, go move into worship, Zanya, again, our people of African descent, uh, are inviting us to a night at the movies. That will be on Saturday, February the 23rd at 5 o'clock. Uh, the dis discussion and reception after, uh, it's a free event, but donations, of course, are welcomed. And it's the film Brother Outsider. Uh, Lucia, Pastor Lucia Chappelle will be again with us at 11 o'clock this morning. Um, and she'll have more information about that. But please note, um, it's uh, going to be on Saturday, February the 23rd at 5 o'clock uh, in the evening. If you need more information about that this morning, uh, please see Reverend Dr. Pat. I see uh, there probably was a, a note um, about the location, but on my particular slide here, I can't see it. So um, uh, we'll make sure that we know the location of that film uh, for February 23rd at 5 o'clock. Wow. Uh, I'm tired before we've even started this morning, so uh, uh, let's turn to one another now and offer a sign of peace, a sign of welcome. We're in the right place this morning. God bless you. remain standing if you are able. The scripture reading comes from the book of Luke, chapter 9, verses 28 through 44, from the message. About eight days after saying this, Jesus climbed the mountain to pray, taking Peter, John, and James along. While he was in prayer, the appearance of his face changed, and his clothes became blinding white. At once, two others were there talking with him. They turned out to be Moses and men standing with him. Moses and Elijah. And what a glorious appearance they made. They talked over his exodus, the one Jesus was about to complete in Jerusalem. Meanwhile, Peter and those with him were slumped over in sleep. When they came to, Rubbing their eyes, they saw Jesus in his glory and the two men standing with him. When Moses and Elijah left, Peter said to Jesus, This is a great moment. Let's build three memorials, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He blurted this out without thinking. While he was babbling on like this, a light, radiant cloud enveloped them. As they found themselves buried in the cloud, they became deeply aware of God. Then there was a voice out of the cloud. 
This is my son, the chosen. Listen to him. When the sound of the voice died away, they saw Jesus there alone. They were speechless, and they continued speechless, said not one thing to anyone during those days of what they had seen. When they came down off the mountain the next day, a big crowd was there to meet them. A man called from the crowd, please, please, teacher, take a look at my son. He's my only child. Often, a spirit seizes him. Suddenly, he's screaming, thrown into convulsions, his mouth foaming, and then it beats him black and blue before it leaves. I asked your disciples to deliver him, but they couldn't. Jesus said, what a generation. No nonsense of God. No sense of God, no focus to your lives. How many times do I have to go over these things? How much longer do I have to put up with this? Bring your son here. While he was coming, the demon slammed him to the ground and threw him into convulsions. Jesus stepped in, ordered the vile spirit gone, healed the boy, and handed him back to his father. They all shook their heads in wonder, astonished at God's greatness, God's majestic greatness while they continued to stand around exclaiming over all the things he was doing, Jesus said to his disciples, treasure and ponder each of these next words. The son of God is about to be betrayed into human hands. Hear what the spirit says today. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. seated. And join with me in a word of prayer this morning. Loving and gracious and holy one, we thank you for this time that we get to spend together as community. We thank you for the openness of God within us and the God who surrounds us this morning. So help us as we have sung and listened, as we have prayed and as we have now shared in music. Help us now to open ourselves fully to that spirit that engages with us this morning. And in that spirit, there is truth and freedom and liberty and hope. So bless us with those gifts this morning as we respond to your word. And in that response, may we therefore go into the world as your people a new people. We pray these things and so much more in the name of Jesus. Amen. So what a journey we've been on over the last few weeks as we have been celebrating the many different parts of Jesus' life, especially those early parts of his life. Those early parts where Jesus received his baptism, where we saw the epiphany. Uh, we have been celebrating just so many parts of those opening beginnings of the life of Jesus and then last week when we gathered, it was just wonderful to welcome Reverend Elder Dr. Nancy Wilson back to our congregation and to share. And I they believe she may be watching this morning. So why don't we just give her a sense of appreciation uh, of our thanksgiving. She shared with us the vivid story of the denomination and where we are as a movement and our impact around the world. And this morning we come to this part of Jesus' life when we remember this uh, transfiguration of the, the one who is Jesus. We heard the story, V&A read it for us so beautifully this morning, 
Uh, we've heard the story of how Jesus went up into the mountain that day, accompanied by some of his disciples. And in that moment, there was this transfiguring of Jesus' body. And in that transfiguration, there was the people of old, the ancient prophets, gathered with Jesus. It was almost like there was this lineage coming down through the histories to now come upon Jesus. And that spirit of truth, that spirit of hope, that spirit of wholeness coming upon Jesus. And it's quite significant, of course, that Moses and Elijah were present with them for, you know, at communion we often talk about the Elijah cup, where the Elijah cup set on the Passover table that no one else can drink from apart from the Messiah. And Jesus in his audacity would pick up that cup and take and drink and not only drink from him himself, but to share it with those disciples around the table that day signifying for themselves that not only was Jesus claiming the presence of the Holy Spirit and that lineage of history, but also saying, therefore, it's no longer contained just for those special people, but now given to all of us to manifest within our lives and within our bodies, given to each and every one of us so that the transfiguration, the transformation of Jesus was not, not just for those who were perhaps picked out from the crowd, but was now offered to every single person, transforming lives that would transform the world. A transfiguration, a transformation of ourselves into the very likeness of who God is, is what Jesus offers the gift to each and every one of us. Not one of us is left out, not one of us is left behind. Each and every one of us is offered this gift because of the lineage of the prophets culminating in Jesus and branching out into the world through people like you and I. It's a simple message. It's a message of transformation. It's a, a message of transformed lives. And it's a transformed life that will transform the world. You know, sometimes I think we've got this uh, whole story of transformation upside down. I think so often we think about transforming the world and looking outside of what the world looks like and all of the problems of the world without reminding ourselves that transformation begins with us. It begins with each and every one of us subjecting, surrendering ourselves to that transforming spirit of Jesus Christ. And the church has done a great job at looking outwards, at looking out, pointing outwards, looking at the problems of the world. So often when you hear evangelists speak from the pulpit, it's often about the, the, the sin of the world, the sin of other people without really looking at our own lives and calling ourselves to account, calling ourselves to our own transformation, calling ourselves to finding a new way of living or living in the presence of the holy, finding ourselves in the midst of the story. I mean, a good preacher once told me that when you point at somebody, there are three other fingers pointing back at yourself. You know, we always point outwards, but we need to look at ourselves for the transformed world only happens when we transform ourselves. Jesus was transformed that day, and it had a huge impact on those disciples. You heard the story. They wanted to stay up in the mountain. They wanted to stay up out of the chaos of the world that was down in the ground. And Jesus constructed and said to them, no, we need to go back down. It's okay to stay in this moment of transformation, but the transformation needs to change your lives. For if your lives are changed, then people, when they see you, will know that transformation is possible, not just for you, but also for one another. We are called to transformed lives. And our transformation, because we are transformed will change the world. People will see our transformed lives and say, if it's possible for you, Lisa, if it's possible for you, Gail, if it's possible for you, VNA, it's possible for me because we are the ordinary people that people look for for transformed lives in a transformed world. And not only do we therefore become transformed, but what we touch, what we see, what we do, all of it is transformed, but it's not from the world down. It's from the people up. It's from the people outwards. It's from the people, our very lives, transformed into the very likeness of Jesus Christ that makes the difference in the world. Oh dear, you know that what that means is that we have to stop every now and again and ask ourselves and check in and see how we're doing. 
how are we doing in this transformation of ourselves? Instead of looking at, at Lisa and saying, oh, I don't like the way Lisa lives. I'm not, I'm not, I really do like the way Lisa lives. Not looking at other people and making judgments about their lives. But looking at ourselves and saying, how am I doing on this spiritual journey? How am I doing in a transformed life? How is the life of Jesus Christ making a difference for me? Not about other people. How is it making a difference for me in order that my transformed life might transform the world? How are we doing on our spiritual journey? That's the whole essence of Lent. The whole essence of Ash Wednesday and reminding ourselves that from dust we came and to dust we shall return. And it's not so important about where we came from or where we're going. It's about what we're doing right now in our own spiritual journeys, in our own spiritual lives. How are they being transformed by the everyday encounters that we have with the Holy Spirit? You know, during Lent, I'm going to be preaching a series of sermons called Giving Up. You know, we we'll often talk about giving stuff up for Lent. I'm going to be preaching a whole series of sermons about giving up in Lent. And I hope that you'll want to come back and share with them because it really does focus upon ourselves and remind ourselves that we are giving it up. Giving it up this year more than chocolate, hopefully. Giving it up, reminding ourselves that we are part of the body of Christ, the presence of the Holy, transformed in our own lives so that we might transform the world. Transformation happens when we meet with Jesus on that mountaintop. Transformation happens when we know personally the spiritual effects of the life of Jesus in our own lives. Transformation happens when we surrender ourselves from the ego that often punishes us to the very presence of the Holy that always blesses us. Transformation happens for you and I this morning, just as it did for Jesus, just as it did for Moses, just as it did for Elijah, just as it did for those early disciples. And transformation doesn't happen in a vacuum. It comes back down to earth so that the world can see transformation through us. How many folks have often said to you, there's something different about you when you've been to worship on a Sunday morning? There's something different about you when I see you encounter everyday living situations. There's something different about you. I believe that's what Christians are looking for. That's what the world is looking for in people like you and me, to see the real evidence of the fruit of the Holy Spirit in our lives, to see it really making a difference in the world, not just talking the talk, but walking the walk. You know, yesterday, I, it was part of my sermon, I shared with our colleagues before we, 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 we came to worship this morning, but yesterday, a friend is in from out of town, and so he wanted to see Hollywood Boulevard. Um, I remember when I was first here in 1991, and they showed me Hollywood Boulevard. I wasn't that impressed, I have to be honest. They've, they've smartened it up a little bit over the years, but... Um, but uh, wanted to go into all the touristy things, you know, the Chinese uh, theater and the, you know, the, all, the, all that good stuff in Hollywood. And so I was down, we were down in Hollywood yesterday afternoon, and I would parked my car, and I was walking to go and meet them because they'd already parked and gone somewhere else. And uh, I was coming along, and there was a street preacher right on the corner of Hollywood and Highland. I'm sure if you've been up there recently, you've seen them out there. And he's there, and he's got this boom box, and he's playing the you know, good, good, charismatic Christian music. And he's singing along. I thought it was Christian karaoke for a moment. You know what I'm like with karaoke. I uh, felt like joining him just for a second, you know. And so there he is, and he's got his big boom box, and he's got his big sign, Repent, for the end of the earth is nigh. And I looked at those signs, and he was starting to get ready to preach, and you just know what's going to come out, and uh, you know how we're all going to hell, and how bad we are, and we're all going to hell in a handbasket, and all of the good stuff that comes out so often with these preachers. But right to his right, just behind him, there was a homeless man laid out on the street. It wasn't most warm yesterday, but it was getting colder in the, in the later afternoon, and I you know, sometimes I can be naughty, right? And you know that about me. Sometimes I can just be a little naughty. And I wasn't in clerics, and so I couldn't be easily recognizable. And so I said to the young man, I said, you know, 
it's really interesting that you should be talking about repentance and calling other people to repentance when there's a homeless man right behind you. Wouldn't it be wonderful if you could think about stopping preaching that would make people feel bad about themselves, which so often language like repentance and sin often makes us feel bad about ourselves. And instead of just singing these wonderful Christian words, perhaps you might just want to help this homeless person. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could have transformed lives that doesn't point its finger at other people, but rather reaches out to those who are in need? Instead of repent, repent, perhaps our lives could be a true reflection of the Christ that would have got down off of the cart, out of the mountain, back down onto earth, and helped this young homeless person on the street. Walking the walk, not just talking the talk. That's how our transformed lives bring a transformed world. That's when we get down off of our ivory towers and come back down to earth and touch the earth with our transformed lives. You know, I really didn't mean to be rude to the young evangelist. You know, we all have different gifts and we do different things to make the gospel come to life. But I think that the gospel is about building people up and not tearing people down. Yes, we all fall short. Yes, we all need to repent. Yes, we all need to acknowledge that there are pieces of our own lives that we need to put back together again, just like Humpty Dumpty who falls off the wall. But our transformed lives must transform the world, must lift people up, call people to a new life, and fix the problems of the world before we start pointing the fingers at individuals. Friends, as we begin this season of Lent, it's a time for us to meditate and reflect on ourselves. So I'm inviting us in this Lent to give it up, to give up so many different things that always are subjective about the world, and give it up so that we might see ourselves as transformed human beings. Because in our transformation, the world has to be transformed. Because we take on a whole new set of values, a whole new set of value systems, that out of those values, Christ becomes present. Off of the mountain and down to the earth, may we have transformed lives so that the world will find transformation itself. Amen? God bless you this morning. Let's pray together. Holy and loving and gracious one, thank you that in this church, in this community, we are really trying to have transformed lives, to look at our own lives and to see how we can bring them into the values of the Jesus that we worship, a Jesus who demonstrated God's love, a Jesus who confronted hypocrisy, a Jesus who was willing to get his hands dirty, looking at his own life, and through that life, offered hope to others. So this morning, as we come to celebrate transfiguration, we remind ourselves that our lives this morning can be transformed too and that we can stand with Moses and Elijah and Jesus and the disciples and the prophets, and we can taste of the goodness of God. God, we are, cannot be deaf to the sirens that just passed our building. And we pray for wherever those ambulances or fire brigade may be traveling to and ask that our prayers of transformation go with them to whatever they might find. Now, our loving and holy one, take the words that have come from my mouth, not allow them to fall to this earth, but rise to you. And in that rising, may we too rise again to the possibilities of our own transformed lives that ultimately will transform the world 
into the very likeness of the heaven and earth that God has created. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Happy Black History Month. Radical inclusivity. Radical inclusivity. That's what this church represents. We truly are the hands and feet of Christ. Where else may you find yourself able to volunteer in so many projects, donating backpacks for children, volunteering at the hospice for AIDS and HIV members of the community? Where else can you continuously participate in feeding the homeless? Where else can you also build bridges with various matters that involved, involve prejudice or involve disenfranchised community members? Not just matters of the don't ask, don't tell, but also inequities with regard to immigration and poverty. And seeing how this is truly the environment where one can be radically inclusive. You know, for over 40 years, our congregation has been a place where we validate love, where God's love for everyone is magnified, is exemplified through even spiritual unions for those of us who have same-sex partners. This is a place that validates love. There is abundance, and 
if God gave us his only son, how can I not give back? Through my time, through my talents, through my treasure. And God's bounty will absolutely flourish. We will win together. As the acolytes and ushers come forward, please give. Give joyously. Thank you. Check, check. Oh, there we go. Okay. Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Bobby Javantine, and I'm going to be joining Jason and DeMarco tonight at 7 o'clock, and I'm really excited about it. And if you guys enjoy the music, um, there's 24 other songs spread across three CDs that will be available in the courtyard over there. This song is Still in Love, and um, it's a song I wrote. I came out from a really conservative Christian culture, and so it was really difficult for me because I grew up in it, and um, when everyone that you know uh, kind of separates their love from you, and they, you connect them with God a little bit, then you start wondering if, if God really loves you. And so I went through a really dark period of my life for about eight or nine months, and uh, this song came to me in the middle of it, and it was really encouraging. So this one's still in love. Drawn away like sailors to the sea Pulled away from shore to find some peace Since I've sailed away I'm not the same But still across the waves I hear my name Less is more is what you always say But I want more and so I run away I feel worse with every choice I choose And I know that your heart is breaking too But I'm still in love with you, Lord I'm still in love with you I could deny that affection with everything I do But I'm still in love with you farther on I go but I'm afraid to start the long walk home cause I'm still in love with you Lord I'm still in love with you and when you see the mess I've made what are you gonna do I'm still in love with you stumble down the track heavy are the burdens on my back I cry as I see you start to run I'm not worthy to be called your son but you're still in love with me Lord you're still in love with me and I can feel it in the warm embrace, the robe, the ring, the feast, that you're still in love with me. And I'm still in love with you, Lord. I'm still in love with you. And when I start to wander, remind me of this truth, that I'm still in love with you. And you're still in love with me.
Thank you very much. We validate love. Please join me in prayer. Heavenly Parent, we love you and praise you every step of the way. May we continue to use these monetary contributions to do your will, not ours, but your will, God. May it multiply in your bounty. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. invite ourselves to join with one another as we go to God in prayer. It's a strange time of year, O oh God. We linger between the seasons of Epiphany and Lent. We are between the joy of your first appearing and the horror of your undoing at the hands of those who would not or could not embrace your way of life. Perhaps we, like Peter, James, and John, wait for your appearing in dazzling light and unmistakable clarity. We are in need of a glimpse of Jesus, who is the way through the mix and mess of this life. We ask that you renew and restore a vision of care within us for your creation. Remind us to take what we need and no more. Encourage us in a counter-cultural faithfulness that is not about consumerism. Spur us with new insight and deeper understanding that we may live mindfully each day, conscious of the impact of what we do and fail to do. We pray for the people of the world whose names we will never know, whose faces flash across the TV screen in anonymity, those who bear the weight of Earth's pain. For the people on the East Coast of the United States, not only after the aftermath of the Superstorm Sandy, but now during the storms and blizzards that are affecting them this day, Though we have long forgotten the people of the Gulf Coast of the U.S., there are still those whose lives have never been the same after Hurricane Katrina. And the people of Japan who are still shattered by the tsunami of not so long ago. We remember and bring to mind and remember that there is a drought in more places on the earth than we imagine in Canada the U.S., South America, Africa, Saudi Arabia, Australia, New Zealand, and Russia. More than 25 million people around the world live in areas of unprecedented drought. May we remember that Jesus is still water of life. We are in need of a glimpse of Jesus who is the truth, the truth that loves is stronger than hate, that peace is possible and life can emerge even in the midst of devastation. We pray for that truth to be known. For the people of Syria, as they continue to shrivel in the pain of civil war and unspeakable brutality. For the people of Bulgaria in the aftermath of an attack. For the people of Mali, as they continue in the midst of political change and religious strife, 
for the human beings who are trafficked in the cargo holds of ships and trucks, reminiscent of slave trade of years ago, a new generation of unrepeatable, unique, and deeply loved creatures who are used and abused in every way. For all those within law enforcement in our own area where we live, that they might be protected, especially as those who seek revenge are sought. We give thanks for the good news that unfolds in the world as people dream your dreams, follow your nudging, and seek you in the focus they meet each day. Perhaps, O God, it is the only transfiguration we really need those who continue to try to find the clean drinking water, for scientists and researchers who have a breakthrough in treating people with ALS, for all of the students and children who continue to work for peace, for the Special Olympians competing in the World Games this week, and for those who showed their courage on the first annual Day of Courage this month honoring the 100th birthday of Rosa Parks, the unsuspecting spark who ignited the civil rights movement. For all of those who are quiet witness to your love and way of life, we give thanks, O God. Draw us to the rhythm of Lent as it unfolds in our midst, a sacred invitation to explore the corners of your soul. Open us to your light that we might see ourselves clearly with all our fears and faults and faith, with all our desires and dreams and duties. Help us to see our journey as a place of your appearing. That like Peter, James, and John, we may come down from that mountaintop and set one foot in front of the other in your name and for your sake. And now, as we remember that we have been connected with the world, let us connect with one another as we pray together, singing the words of the prayer that Jesus gave to us. to you knowing we have tried to write our part on our own and have sometimes missed the mark. We have believed we could do it all by ourselves and then come to you seeking, seeking that you, only one, who was there with us when we were broken and hurt, hear us now as we silently confess our shortcomings knowing that acknowledging them is the first step to making adjustments 
in our own lives towards wholeness and transformation. Let's go to God in prayer. Together, may we join our voices. Forgive us for not seeking you, your ways, first and foremost. Forgive us for not seeking out the stranger and the oppressed first, before giving into our wants above the needs of others. Call us away from the temptation to write our own lives as the hero in the tale and instead, instead to, to follow, follow your, your steps, steps giving, giving to all in need, need joining in solidarity with, with the outcast, praying for the sick, caring for the poor, visiting the imprisoned. These are not, not actions the world recognizes as heroic, but they are the roles you have called us into. Help us to live out our story free from the veil of the world. In the name of Christ, who lived and died for us and lives again, we pray. Amen. Friends, we are breathing and we are alive. We are loved and we are forgiven. We have been given the opportunity to live into new life, we have been given the opportunity to start afresh and anew. Our future has not been written yet. But there are plans full of hope. So may we go forth and live into the goodness and mercy of our God. And remember, God is still in love with us. Amen. amen. And amen. God is with you. And also, and also with you. With you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Accept, O oh God, our thanks and praise for all you have done for us. We thank you for the wonder of life, for the mystery of love, for the blessing of family and friends, and for the loving care which surrounds us. Mm -hmm and the love with which you have blessed the families of previous generations in this community. Mm. Praise, Praise and thanksgiving, thanksgiving to you, our God, God Creator, Son, Son, and Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us sing our holy to our God. Santo, 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 mi corazón. as one, though we are many, opening our hearts to the resurrection which is ours yes. and proclaiming that mystery we call faith. Mm -hmm. On the night that Jesus was to be taken from us, he gathered with his disciples. He took bread from the table. He blessed it and he broke it and said, this is my body given for you. Eat of it in remembrance of me. Likewise, following supper, he took the cup. Neil talked about the Elijah cup, the cup that no one was to touch but the Messiah, and he gave it to everyone. He blessed it and offered it, saying, Drink of this, all of you, and in doing so, remember me. Let's pray. As we gather together before your table, pour out your spirit upon these gifts of bread and the cup and all who have come to be fed. 
Just as the bread is broken into many parts, so your grace makes us into one people, our hearts open to serve all in need, our lives offered so that others might be healed. Just as the cup is filled to overflowing with the sweet taste of hope, so our gifts are emptied so that all might be blessed, our joy shared with the des despairing of our word. And when you gather us together at the feast to come, when we sit down at the table with our sisters and brothers, we will bow our heads and worship you forever. God in community, holy in one. Amen. 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 My friends here at Founders Metropolitan Community Church, as with all MCCs around the world, we have many things in common, but one that we remind ourselves of every week is that we share and celebrate an open communion. That means you need not be a member of this church or of any church to come forward and partake of this meal that Jesus has set for all of us. So in a moment, the ushers will guide us to stations in the front. And if you choose to come forward to receive of the elements today, our tradition is to take them, dip them in non-alcoholic grape juice, place it upon your tongue, or you may take and dip and receive yourself, and then we offer a brief blessing. If you'd like one or the other, let us know, because we don't want to be a stumbling block to the table. If you want to come forward and receive today, but just between you and God, there's a station of consecrated elements to your right, to which you might go at any time and receive Stay where you're at, come forward. God is in the house. God is in our hearts. So let's keep this feast one with the other. May the ushers guide us and the acolytes and servers please join.
we've learnt several things this morning. And the things that I pray that we take with us into the world is that we expect and are promised a transformed life. And when we transform our lives, it is only possible to transform the world. And beyond that, I've learned that I like v and shoes. <laughs> Me too. Me too. And I know. And you too? We'll deck it out for them after worship this morning. Let's rise in body and spirit as we close worship this morning. to God's gracious mercy and protection each and every one of us is given. And the blessing of God known as Creator, Savior, and Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us now and evermore. Amen. Go in peace. joining us today. By participating with us online, you are an extension of this church's membership ministry, our extended fellowship. Whether you're tuning in from Los Angeles, London, Tokyo, or Zimbabwe, wherever you are in the world, we are so excited to embrace you, to hear from you, and to pray for you. All of the people you've just seen in this broadcast, not just the ministers and the choir, but every person sitting on those pews, 
we are here for you. So please, why don't you connect with us? Interact with us. We have four ways you can do that. Telephone, email, Facebook, and Twitter. And all of those links are located at the bottom of every webpage of our website at mccla.org. With your help, we can not just continue, but expand and reach a greater number of people with God's love through this ministry. Be a video angel amongst us by supporting this ministry through our donate link located just under the support menu in the upper right corner of any page of our website. Your participation is very important. And I want to invite you to write to me and let me know how I can be in prayer and praise with you. Even though you are not here in our worship center, you are still a part of MCCLA. Email me directly at revneal at mccla.org. May God bless your life. And I look forward to welcoming you back many, many times to MCCLA and our weekly live broadcast. You are